doing this interview from my uh, sister's office. Um, she's a wedding planner, so sweet background, right? Um, just want to talk about the bow, uh, making that video right now, editing it together, and ended up playing four sessions. Um, only played one at the two five. The two five there is pretty rag heavy, and the one three is uncapped, so it's pretty good. Um, multiple people buying the one three game for five hundred to a thousand dollars, so it's pretty good. And the two five games. Real big, like most people buying the two five game over three thousand dollars. Um, but played one session at two five and um, ran poorly and um, kind of played poorly. So um, after that, I, I kind of played one three at the bow and uh, had decent results. Um, so uh, I guess so. Uh, those are the uh, the four sessions I played at the bow over two days. Um, yeah, I just didn't think the two five game was that good, that plus EV, and um, so I ended up only playing it. I ended up only playing it one day. Um, uh, I thought the one three game was usually good and it was deep enough, so people were making big enough mistakes. Um, so I'm about to show you some hands from the session, what I think the three most interesting hands are. Um, and the first two are from the 2-5 game. Uh, and the last one is from my last session playing 1-3. Um, so let's check them out. So in this hand, we're in the big blind and there's uh, four limps in front of us. And we like to race in the big blind to $35 with pocket queens. Um, we get called here from the hijack and the button, and we go through a race to a flop. Uh, flop is the nuts. I mean, it's perfect. Rolls out ace, queen, five, rainbow. Uh, so not many draws um, besides gut shot straight draws. And we like to check, and it checks around. Uh, I like to check back some hands on a flop, especially a side board where I think people can think I have maybe kings or jacks or a queen here. And we like to lead the turn for 60. And we get one caller, um, the hijack. Um, turn rolls out three of clubs, which I think is a good card for us. Didn't complete the spades. And... We're losing to pretty much 6-4 right here. Uh, we elect to lead small because we're not sure how strong the hijacks range is. And we make it 90. This is where it gets weird. He uh, raises the 215 and five hands prior. I saw him fold kings pre-flop to a three bet. Um, and he was correct. So uh, I don't like raising here because I don't know if he'd call with sevens or fives. Uh, the only hand I think he'd call with here is 6-4. So after a minute, we get the call out there, and he rolls over 6-4. So good no raise there. Like the way I played the hand. Just got unlucky. So in this hand, uh, there's a button straddle. A small button calls and under the gun calls, and I like to raise the 45 from under the gun plus one. Um, I have ace-king suited here. Diamonds. And uh, the button calls. Small blind calls and under the gun calls. So we're going four ways to flop and the pot's already $185. Um, which we're okay with. I mean, it's a little bloated, but that's all right. Action game. Flop comes jack, seven, three with one diamond. So we have two overs and backdoor diamonds and it checks to us. And I elect to continue for 115. I don't think you can just give up on every flop um, in multi-way plots. And I think a small percentage you need to continue with in live games, even though I think waiting in live games till you have made hands is usually the best strategy. This is one of those flops that I'm very happy to continue with. Um, it's hard for anyone to continue. Um, even with just a jack, it'd be tough. And there's a ton of good cards for me on the turn. Um, it folds around under the gun, who has $190 behind. 
and he takes a second here and um, ends up jamming. And for 70 more dollars, we of course snap it off. And it does not roll out in our favor. And he shows pocket nines here. Um, I actually tell him, did you see my hand? Because when I look at my cards the second time in the beginning of his hand, I thought I did it a little high and uh, didn't protect him very well. Uh, and I really thought I could get nines, tens, eights, all those type, type of hands to fold. Um, he took a minute before he did it too, so I think I think he would have uh, he would have folded if he would have been deeper. But I'm okay with the way I played it. Can't be results oriented. Get him next time. So in this hand, we look down at nine seven of spades, and uh, we elect just to call from the small blind. Uh, there were six limps in front of us, um, and it's gonna be tough to play out of position. Um, Big blind raises to 20, and it actually folds around back to us. I almost muck my cards here, but then I, uh, I look over and I realize that the uh, the big blind is $600 deep, so it's a pretty easy call. We call the extra $17, and we go heads up to a flop. Um, I had just sat down at the table about 30 minutes ago, but I had played with this guy two nights before, or sorry, the night before. Flop comes jack 10 8. So we flop the low end of the straight. Um, we check, thinking he's probably going to continue on a wet board like that. And he bets $15. Uh, a little small for us here. We're trying to build a pot and uh, see if we can play for stacks. So we raise the 40. Um, takes a second here and then throws in the extra $25. Um, so pot's $138 going to the turn. And um, turn rolls out the three of diamonds. There's now two flush draws. And I still think we have the effect of nuts. I don't think he was raising queen nine from the big blind. At least from what I saw the night before. And we leave for $75. Um, a little under half pot, a little over half pot here. Uh, Maybe could have sized it a tad bigger, but whatever we did, we induced the right action. Um, he takes a second here and uh, announces raise. Um, so he ends up raising for $225. And I'm not exactly sure if he can be doing this with hands like King, Queen of Hearts, Ace, King of Hearts, Ace, Queen of Hearts, Ace, Queen of Diamonds, anything like that. Um, so I pretty much have them on jacks or tens, or maybe maybe even aces. Um, but with the two flush draws out here, and me thinking he already has a main hand, I think the only thing to do here is jam. So we, uh, we take a second here and um, we, uh, we decide, let's go all in. It's about 525 effective. So it's a little over $300 more to him and he snaps it off. And uh, we roll out a six of spades and we show our straight. And he says, you're good. Um, we were pretty wrong on our read here. And the big blind actually had ace, queen of diamonds. I didn't think he'd raise that hand. So I'm um, very happy that I raised the turn and didn't let him see the free card where he probably wouldn't have lost any more money. Um, but it ends up being a nice little hand here to, uh, to start our final 1-3 session. Thank you, sir.
taxi right now. Noticing that uh, cord broke last night. I got a really low clearance in the back of this trailer. Um, so we got a little project before we head west to New Orleans. Uh, there's a Home Depot real close by. Luckily, we're gonna go see if we can fix this and just run the cord above the trailer. Uh, it's the second time it's broke, so uh, hopefully this solves our little issue.